What is up everyone and welcome to an awesome video. I haven't done anything like this for a very, very long time, so it's really, really nice to cover some free PCs. This time around, they're free laptops. Now, I have had some free laptops in the past, but nothing that I've made videos about, and I normally focus on desktop stuff, so this will be a nice change. Here we have three computers that I got given, so thank you very much to the people that were getting rid of these in uh, a workplace sort of down the road from me, I think. And um, yes, I am very happy to take them off your hands and uh, wipe the hard drives and do with them as I please. Now, I got these three machines, and they are in order of age, oldest, middle, newest. Um, I also got a case, and this case is for this end laptop, which is pretty cool because that's the most sort of bulky, odd, old school shaped one. And I also got a charger, as you guys can see. This charger is for this one also. Um, I did get a mains lead portion as well, but that's already plugged in because I'm going to demo that. Now, unfortunately, I did not get a charger for this one or this one, but these will be standard chargers, so that's not a problem at all. What we'll do is take a look at them all individually, starting with the newest, and we'll work our way down the line, um, because at the end, that one over there is the one that I'm going to be powering on, because it's the most unusual. And this charger, guys, something that I'll show you closer later, the charger for it is actually fan-cooled. And that thing over there weighs a ton. But I do believe for its time it must have been a high-end computer, because the amount of ports on it are incredible. So I cannot wait to see what that boots up into. But if it does have a password or whatever, then we won't be recovering that or installing a new, new OS in this video, uh, just to see the specs. There will be few future videos on the, the machines. Now, I know there will probably be future videos on this one. I'm not sure about these two. What I may do is just put fresh OS's on them and sell them on for what I can get for them after getting some uh, chargers off eBay. But we will take a closer look at them regardless. So let's move the other two out of the frame and take a closer look at this guy. Now, as I said, this is the newest out of the three, but it does look fairly low end. For starters, there's an Intel Celeron sticker on it and the keyboard, the keyboard feels very, very sort of plasticky, not satisfying at all. Same goes for the trackpad, and it's got a missing D key. So I do believe this machine is fairly low end. It does have a widescreen glossy display, looks to be 15.4 inches, along with a webcam up there. I do believe either there is a webcam there or there's just a space in the case for a webcam. It's very hard to tell actually whether there's a camera in there or not. We will soon see though. Let's close the lid. And this computer is actually made by E-System. So it's an E-System. Really, really not sure about that brand. If anyone has heard of that brand, then feel free to let me know what they're all about. Um, I'm not too clued up on these cheaper lower end machines, but I do believe that this one and the middle of the road one that I have, the, uh, the middle aged one, is a um, is fairly cheap computer. But we will see, we will see what it's like. Now the system itself, um, looks to be pretty much standard. It does have a Windows 7 sticker on it, so that does show the age. Um, and hang on a second, guys, we are in luck. All of the specs are written on a label on the bottom. Let me just have a little read. So we have an Intel Celeron C900, 2.2 gigahertz, with 2,048 megabytes of RAM, of course, so that's, um, that's two gigs of RAM. 160 gigabyte hard drive, DVD rewriter, Microsoft Windows 7 Home Premium 56 uh, 15.6 inch widescreen TFT display. So that is the specifications of the machine. We do not even have to turn it on to see the specs, which is awesome. But one thing that we will do before moving on to the next machine is take a little look at the ports. So we have absolutely nothing on the front. On the side, we have the DVD drive. On the back, we have USB and the VGA output as well as the battery that will just ping out like that. On this side we have cooling vent, ethernet, two more USB ports, audio in and out and that looks to be like an SD card reader. So not a bad little system. I hope that it works. I hope that I can wipe the hard drive, put a fresh copy of Windows 7 on there, use the, uh, uh, the license on the bottom and 
have a uh, nice little laptop to sell, that'll be great. But first, I need to get some chargers in, because I don't have many spare laptop chargers. So, that is that machine. Let's move on to the next one. So this is our middle-of-the-road machine. Not the oldest, not the newest, but it is very intriguing. All of these machines, apart from maybe the one that I just showed you, are fairly intriguing to me. Um, the one that I just showed you is the most normal out of the three, most normal by today's standards. Now, this computer, I don't know what make it is. It says notebook on it, which I find really, really odd. Um, it's got no make, it's got a serial number on the bottom, but nothing else. It's also got a Windows XP Professional sticker, so we obviously know what era this machine is from with Windows XP Professional OEM. Um, the, it's slightly heavier. Well, I say slightly, it's quite a bit heavier and quite a bit chunkier than the previous machine. It's got a glossy display, um, but it looks to be a 16x10 display, not a 16x9 display. Keyboard feels better than the other machine, actually feels relatively decent. It also has a number pad, and the trackpad looks to have seen quite a bit of wear, but there are no stickers or anything stuck across this machine. Now, one of the most interesting parts of this computer are the ports. It seems to have an abundance of different ports. So if we just look at a few of them, we've got infrared, what looks to be an SD card reader, firewire, audio in and out, digital audio out, which is really cool. On this side, we have a DVD drive, two USB ports. On the back, we have loads going on, not even sure what half of it is. Um, we've got what looks to be the charging input, S-Video, two USB ports, something else that looks like S-Video, um, or it could be, I don't even know, they might be two S-Videos for whatever reason, they just look identical. Some kind of coax connection, no idea what that is. Kensington lock right there. On this side we've got DVI, um, Ethernet, 56K modem, and as well as a PC card slot, which is cool. So, quite a lot of ports on this machine, and uh, it seems to be... If I was to look at the make, which there isn't one, I don't know if Notebook is a make or what, but if you look at the system, you'd think it's fairly low end, but then you look at the ports and it's got like loads of ports under the sun, especially for Windows XP time, you know, you've got FireWire, you've got Digital Out, you've got loads of stuff. So yeah, and a nice, nice collection of quite a few USB ports as well as um, four USB ports. I guess that isn't loads, but still pretty cool to see. So this is a big, heavy, bulky machine. Again, do not have a power supply for it, and it seems to use a fairly interesting power supply, so I'll grab one, and maybe we'll fire it up in the future, see what it's all about. But let's move on to the system that is proving to be the most interesting right now, and that is the oldest out of the three. By the way, guys, on the bottom of this machine, I've just noticed that it's got a little speaker grill. Look at the size of it. It's smaller than my thumb, and it says subwoofer above it, so that is hilarious. So here we have the third machine. This is also a notebook computer. I'm gonna to have to do some research. Maybe should have done it before the uh, video, but there we go. As you guys can see, this is noticeably older and it has the weight to go with the age. This thing weighs a ton. This has a matte display, uh, obviously not widescreen at all. Looks probably about 14 inches, something like that. Nice trackpad with a scrolly doohickey in the middle, which is cool. Clicking, keyboard, feels nice. This is heavier than my IBM ThinkPad. Oh gosh, than my Lenovo ThinkPad, sorry, my R61, but um, it's not as nice quality in terms of keyboard. Here we have some buttons to do various things, speakers of course. Um, now there is some really interesting things about this machine. It says notebook on it. For starters, what the heck is this on the front? Um, I'm no expert on old laptops, but man, there's a little display here and all sorts of buttons. These are volume, uh, play, pause, stop, previous, next, track, all sort of media control buttons. And there's a screen there. I have no idea what that is. It's almost as if it has a built-in Walkman, which is hilarious. Uh, on the side here, we have a floppy drive right there, three and a half inch floppy, which is awesome. We have a DVD drive, so floppy and DVD. So definitely, you know, um, a high-end floppy-based system. Um, well, system that includes a floppy drive. Infrared there. Coming around the back, you can see crazy amount of ports. We have, um, let's see if we can do this, serial, VGA, these two round thingies. One of them's got to be S-Video, the other one is something else. It looks like ADB, but I have no idea. 
um, Ethernet 56k, four USB ports, Firewire, digital audio, analog audio, loads and loads of stuff here guys. And on this side we have the charging input and the uh, PCI expansion slot whatever you call those. On laptops, I never know the differences between the different ones. And this system overall just intrigues me to the max. So on the bottom, we've got big, chunky, beefy fans. Uh, the whole thing weighs a ton. I've got to put it down because it's actually painful. But let's open her up and see what she does. I'm going to get another camera angle and also plug in the charger. All right, folks, let's take a look. First things first, let's plug in this fan charger. And as you guys may be able to hear, there you go, the fan is running in the charger, always a good sign. So this system is louder than pretty much, this system is way louder than today's laptops or even today's desktops without being switched on, that's just with the charger. So let's plug it in and I guess let's press the power button, it's got some LED indicators there showing that it's charging so Let's fire it up. One of them's turned green. Let's see what it does. I hope it fires up. Oh, that's not green anymore. Maybe it needs to sit here and charge a little bit, does it? Nope, here we go. Oh yes, don't know if you can hear that on video, but we have a nice loud hard drive. Display is pinging into life. There we have it, what do we have? All right, let's just press F1 to resume get into the OS, it'll be easier to read the specs once we're in. Okay, there's the floppy drive kicking in. Windows XP Home Edition, cool, cool, right. So this is an early XP laptop. I was kind of hoping that it would be Windows 2000 or something around there, um, something a little bit more fun, but yeah. I guess having a DVD drive and USB ports means that XP could, could very likely be on here. Soundworks, which is groovy. Here we are in the system, and it works, which is good, so that means we can check out the specs of the system. Man, it's been a while since I've played around with XP. So my computer, mouse buttons are a little small for my liking. Let's take a look at the specs. Lovely little system, guys. Intel Pentium 4 at 1.7 gigahertz with 256 megs of RAM. Lovely, lovely. Let's check out the hard drive in this thing. Awesome. Very excited. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Local disk. There's the floppy drive, of course. Let's have a little, little spy on here. It is a 20 gigabyte hard drive, which is wonderful. Very, very interesting. Let's get out of that and let's have a quick look at the graphics. Ah, interesting, there are no graphics drivers installed on this system. In fact, the system does appear to be fairly driverless. Graphic driver is definitely not installed, as you can see. Shouldn't be that laggy, and the resolution doesn't look that great either. So, the audio driver seems to be working, and it does have Office on here, but um, this must be a fresh install, and it doesn't have uh, the graphics driver, which is, you know, fine because I can get the graphics driver. But this is for sure an interesting system. Now, I am pretty gutted that it does not have an older version of Windows. I would really, really like it to have Windows 2000 or something. Um, but that's that. Even XP feels retro to me today, so uh, at least that's something interesting to play around with in the future. Maybe after we get the graphics drivers, we could even see if it'll fire up some older games. Um, obviously not sure, but there's probably a dedicated GPU in there. Um, it's highly likely anyway. Listen to that fan, guys. That is crazy. So there they are, folks. Three free laptops. Not the easiest thing to say. Two or four would have been easier, but I have three of them, so here they are. Um, now, I'm going to go through the line and basically explain what my plans are. This one, I'm going to get a charger for it right away. Give it a fresh install if it needs one. Uh, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm going to make sure everything works, make sure all the drivers are there, clean this gunk off, give it a general clean and sell it on straight away because 2.2 gigahertz Celeron, 160 gig hard drive, it's not too bad at all. Maybe I even know someone in the family or one of my friends that could do with a laptop. This is ideal. You could probably shift it on for about £60, something like that. That's my guess anyway. It doesn't appear to be 
anything mind-boggling. This one, of course, we don't know if it works, along with this one. This one may not work, but it's probably very easy, easily sortable. This one probably doesn't work, but it may be kind of a better spec than this one for its time. So it may be of equivalent speed, so I could do a very similar thing with this one, but I need a power supply for that as well. I'll focus on this one first because at least I know the specs and I know that it's got Windows 7 on it. I'll focus on this one later. And in terms of this one, of course, it's not really worth reselling because it's not usable by today's standard. It's too heavy, too bulky, much too slow, and it's much too loud. So I'll probably keep it for a little while. Um, I have got a growing interest in keeping a few of these older machines to maybe put on a bit of a display on a high shelf in my new office or whatever. And although this one doesn't really mean anything to me and it's not gonna look that great next to a PowerBook G3 or a PowerBook G4 or an iBook G3 that I may want up there or whatever, um, it's still a nice old system to play around with. Um, but that is basically it. That's all the plans I have for now. So I'll put the models into eBay um, very soon over the next couple of days get some power supplies ordered and um, then at least I'll be able to tinker around with them a little bit more. So expect videos on probably all three of these systems in the future, but they could be a long way down the road in the future or pretty close in the future, but it's probably this one you'll see first. But this is also the cheapest plasticky, not very nice feeling one that I want to get rid of first. So yeah, that is that. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video about these free computers. Um, if you like what you see, then feel free to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Press thumbs up if you enjoyed, thumbs down if you didn't, all that kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. You know the score. I hope you all have a brilliant weekend, guys, and I will see you next week.